Our guest in this segment has been a staple of the community. He has dedicated his adult life to serving it in the uh, capacity of uh, public safety and rose to the title, the ultimate title of chief of police in the city of Martinsburg for um, a person like me who's been uh, started in Martinsburg in January of 1990 and I can remember uh, meekly as a 20-something calling the city of Martinsburg Police Department to track down a story and hearing the booming voice of George <laughs> Swartwood answering the telephone or getting the line saying, yes, what answer can I give you for this? And I, Chief, can you please tell me about the crime that took place? Being totally intimidated, but then once I met the man, realizing that there was no reason to be because he was such a great gentleman. And uh, yesterday got news about his retirement coming up uh, as uh, chief of police in the city of Martinsburg. George, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Good morning, Rob. Mr. Subfield, how are you, sir? George. Always good to see you, Bill. Uh, yes, uh, I am. Um, 39 years, uh, great years. I've loved every minute of it. I, I flat love this town. I love Martinsburg. I love, I love Martinsburg PD. And it, it's, been, uh, it's been a great time each and every year. Uh, this is something I've thought about. I've talked to my wife, Lisa, about it. I've talked to my uh, daughter, Bethany, and we, we kind of talked and texted a lot. She texts a lot mm -hmm. to me. So I, it was coming, and, and I saw 39 years. Uh, that's a long time. And I looked out at some of the roll calls, and I said, my Lord, I, I've done probably the background investigations on half the department that's there. Yeah. And I got the best. I got the absolute best department. I got the best people, Rob. I put Martinsburg PD. They're the best department in the nation as far as I'm concerned. And the people, it's always been about my people. So this is a little hard for me because I'm kind of talking about myself. And I think most people say I don't do that. I talk about who I have. And that's my greatest attribute is the men and women of the police department and the city. They've been tremendous to me. Well, and you've been a, a great friend to the media during your time here. As you know, it's unusual for a town of this size to have a newspaper, a couple of different radio stations. There was a time when Martinsburg had its own TV station as well. And you've never been a stranger to answering tough questions or providing information when needed. I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, you all have been so good to me, too. You've been so kind. And uh, the friendships that we have uh, developed have just been tremendous. Uh, and everyone uh, in this town has been uh, good to me. And, but especially, you know, I got to give a shout out to a few people, if you don't mind. I mean, I just, I just have to. I mean, Mayor Kevin Knowles, I wish him all the best in the coming election. He's, he's been great. Uh, some of the words that he said in our uh, parting uh, press release that they put together were just tremendous. I was humbled by them. I truly was. Uh, my boss, uh, Mark Baldwin, the city manager, has been a great boss. I've enjoyed so much working for him and everything that he's accomplishing in the city and both he and the mayor are going to accomplish in the future in the city and a host of others uh, assistant uh, assistant city manager andy blake uh, he's a little bit new to the team when you think of 39 years but he's doing really well and i've, I've grown close to andy and we have uh, steve mcbride in hr and new uh, addition and all of them, Jeff Wilkerson from the city shed, I was very close to as well. So the city's been great to me. It's been a great employee, uh, employer. Uh, it employed my brother, as you know, as well. He was a lieutenant with the police department. So uh, when I came on, sometimes I'd get put on that shift. And, Lord, Mom, I love you, but putting me on my brother's <laughs> shift, that was, that was rough going sometimes. But uh, it was all good. And uh, it's always been to me like a family. Uh, it's home. Like I said, this is town. I, I grew up here, uh, you know, went to every school, went to every public school, John Street, South Middle School, go Trojans, Martinsburg Bulldogs, you know, go Martinsburg and a little bit of Shepherd, go Rams. So it, it was always that. It was always a, a family uh, atmosphere to me. And, and I tell new applicants that we are very close. Uh, we're a, you know, a mid-sized department uh, for this area, for uh, West Virginia, but we're very close. And I appreciate that. And I think that's how you have to approach it, and, and also their families. George, when will your last day be? Well, I'll tell you, we looked at that, and June 1st would be three years exactly when I took over as chief. So uh, we were looking at it, you know, first I was thinking, hey, Mark, can I do two weeks and get, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> you know, with, there's a process, you know that you got to go through. And there was some back and forth like, hey, stay through the fiscal uh, months of July. I said, no, no, no. 
So June 1st uh, was first I was thinking, but then uh, it fell kind of halfway into pay period. So we looked at June 9th. So that'll be the the absolute last day. But uh, it's kind of bittersweet, I got to tell you. I mean, I I love Martinsburg PD. Uh, I love the work. Uh, I love being I've always loved being a cop. I, I truly have. And it, it's great stuff. Yeah. It's great stuff. Anybody interested in this profession, we're hiring. I'm going to get a little plug in for that as well. The test is coming up here later in May. So anyone interested in this profession, please apply. It's, it's a very rewarding career and actually getting to help people. And I've met so many people, so many friends. The list is just phenomenal. But we've accomplished a lot of good things that um, you know, I put, I played a humble part in, but it's always been about a teamwork and team spirit when we went and did these things. But I mean, some of, some of the things that we have done that uh, really stand out to me, you know, we have we have uh, first of all, we have an absolute beautiful Martinsburg Police Department building that has become uh, just a focal point. Uh, outstanding SRT members. They're they're some of the best I've ever seen. What's an SRT member? Uh, the special response team, uh, kind of like a SWAT team, but special response team. They're the best with Frank Polinek heading that up. But we also got a competitive wage and a step pay plan uh, that's going that has been uh, put into effect, and, and we we work very close with the city and the city entities to get that done. So the, the wage right now for beginning officer, I believe it's fifty two five when it's all said and done, or fifty one five. I think it's fifty two five. But uh is very high. It's the highest I've ever seen it. So I I'm really proud of that. But we reached out into the community with our department uh, to do canine demonstrations, uh, to get into schools, to get into churches, because I've always felt they're our kids. All the kids in this city and everywhere in this community, they're our kids, and we got to try to take care of them as best we can. So to go into schools or do a Cub Scout tour of the department and see their face light up, or even doing an Easter egg hunt on mm -hmm. uh, around Easter time and see those kids' faces with the police, they're tremendous. But we have so many things. We've got three canine dogs we didn't have before. I'm very proud of the canine. They're, they're outstanding. Each officer's outstanding. Uh, Aaron Miller, Ryan Fritz, uh, Dalton Condo, uh, they're just uh, outstanding. And the CERT program, uh, you know, Crime Interdiction Response Team. I was I was thinking of the name Dirt Drug Interdiction Response Base. I said, oh, don't, don't call it that. So we didn't, but th they kind of fostered that themselves. But, you know, Sergeant Harper, uh, he heads that up. Dalton Condo's been a standout. He's just been a standout in that. And they're getting dangerous drugs off our streets. And most of them come at the point of traffic stops with armed drug dealers. I've never seen so many guns, so many guns in the hands of felons and drug dealers in my last two years than I've seen in my entire career. I just haven't. And, uh, you know, when we saw that they stopped one individual, uh, to give him credit, they stopped one individual, they got dope off of him. But he also had an AR-15 in between the seats with a serial number off of it, an AR-15 loaded, you know, ready to go, why to protect product. That's what it's for. And our guy stopped him. The incident uh, went off without incident. He was arrested. But right at that point, I knew, hey, we get, we got to increase our people's safety. So we went and got ceramic. And I told the city they're not, they're not, they're not cheap, but you need to have them. Those ceramic uh, level three ballistic plates, I had Lieutenant Allball research it for me to find that it would stop a rifle round or it would deflect a rifle round. So that's what our, we made sure our guys got in the outer vests and things like that. Just try to make them more comfortable, make them more efficient, make their job better. But my people are tremendous. And uh, going outside of the department, all the entities that I've met through the years, you know, uh, Captain Burnett with the state police, state police. Yes, I still say police. <laughs> and uh, Nathan uh, with Sheriff's Department, but, you know, always fond in my heart is the Eastern Panhandle Drug and Violent Crime Task Force. And I have two officers down there, uh, Matt and Derek, that I'm just extremely uh, close to and very, very fond of both in their careers. And, uh, you know, Jeff Caesar with the FBI, and he's been like a brother to sit and talk to me whenever I needed to. And Dean Olack with the West Virginia State Police, Dean. Uh, just tremendous people. And just going outside of the department a little bit, but they are always vital. They do such a great job. 
And the United States Attorney, Mr. Bill Illenfield, uh, he's actually coming here to the station here later today, but he's, uh, he's reached out to me in friendship, too, and, and professionalism. Uh, what a class act, and, and I really enjoyed that. And my own detectives, uh, I have to tell you, that's what I am at heart. I'm a detective, and that's... That's very, <clears throat> excuse me. You did, you did well, Chase. I tried. <laughs> that's very well. dear to me. And uh, like Sergeant uh, Luciano, he's like, I, I can't say enough good words about him. And, uh, you just need to bring more Italians on before you retire, George, and you'll just have more agreed, Lucianos. Agreed, agree, sir. Yeah, that would, that would lighten it up. That's uh, all you got to do. Hey, you know, you made it 11 minutes in before you teared up. That's it. pretty good. I was trying. I had I the over-under at six <laughs> minutes myself, so you did well. <laughs> Bill. Yeah. Uh, Chief, it's, I think we could spend two hours uh, us highlighting your accomplishments and what you've done for the city and the community. Uh, but there'll be two things that ever since I've known you, you've, you've stood out. Uh, one is this endearing smile that you always have. Uh, how can you not like someone with that wonderful smile? And the second thing is I've never heard you say a bad thing about anybody. And we've been on several opportunities where you, not the spotlight on you, you could have kind of uh, dropped your hair down a little bit and said something bad and negative. You've never done that. So for both of these, I, I praise you for it. And that's one of the reasons you're such an endeared figure to the community. Oh, uh, Bill, that, that means so much to me. and uh, I'm very appreciative yeah. of that. Uh, my wife, Lisa, was saying, hey, I hope Bill's, Bill's yeah, on the show well, so you get to see him. So yeah. that was good, too. She sends her best well, to you as well. Well, thank you very much, George. And uh, yeah. talking to my daughter, Bethany, and all, you know, that, that's something you try to instill in people. You know, I'm, I'm going to make it, you know, with what, what we, we do, you yeah. know, what we do. I don't, I don't want to ever run someone down or something yeah. like that. I mean, that's not me. But that's very good to hear. And my mom uh, – would tell me you, you did good, son. <laughs> you did good. You yeah, really so have. And, I appreciate that. And and that that spirit is what we need more of. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, uh, civility is a word that I uh, kind of come back to all the time. But civility can be demonstrated a lot of different ways. And your smile and the fact you don't say anything bad about people to me is the epitome of being civil of civility again you're promoting what we need to promote more in this world oh sir you're you're yeah. too kind yeah. uh you're too kind but i greatly appreciate it i truly do and like i said the the, the department is great uh aaron gibbons my deputy chief yeah. my lord almost <laughs> I can't say enough good things about Aaron. He does a tremendous job. He, he jumps in whenever I need something or whenever I'm saying, hey, uh, I told him when I got hired this, I, I said, I know this may come to a shock to you, but my IT skills are not at the epitome <laughs> of height. I said, but, and he's much better at it with yeah, me, but yeah. way more than that. Support, always being there to listen. Aaron, Aaron's a great deputy chief. He would do well in any position uh, coming up or anything else. Yeah. And there's, there's always interest in uh, th this is a time for uh, advancement. It's a wonderful opportunity if the city chooses to go inside. Uh, and there are also other people that may be interested in it as well. And uh, like I said, even uh, people that, I, that I've known and talked to and have told me they've expressed interest in some of these things. But Martinsburg PD will go on. Martinsburg PD will be the best department in the nation. I truly believe that. That's how I feel in my heart with all of you. And all the people I've met in the community, my my Lord, uh, the Brian Stevens with the school board, Jackie Long, so many others uh, would just be, I'd be here forever yeah. thanking yeah. everyone. Uh, I mentioned your personal attributes that I find to be so endearing and so effective. From your professional uh, work, uh, you've done a lot of things. Uh, a lot of stuff that I think deserves praise. But the part from your professional aspect that resonates with me more than anything else is your effort to make the police more approachable to the community. You've gone out of your way to make the police appear to be human and caring for the fellow man and for the community. And and this is very much appreciated. I'm sure it's appreciated by your department. It's very much appreciated by the community as a whole. 
Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we've always been a community policing department, and, and community policing is not easy on crime, yeah. nothing like that whatsoever. In fact, it's harder on crime. But you got to get out. We're part of this community. That's what we always wanted to uh, sell, and, and not sell, but to uh, make the community understand we're part of you. This is what we do. That's why we're right downtown. That's why we never moved our police department. We wanted that link to Main Street, Martinsburg. Oh, and Robbie Blair, you're doing a great job there as well. <laughs> but uh, there's always been that link, and I've always believed you got to be able to get out and talk to people. Get out of the car, walk downtown, be on your bike patrol. Bill Park's downtown, and he's retiring as well. Oh, he is? Uh, yes, uh, his time's going to come up a little quicker before me, but he's he's been an institution down there downtown. He's done a great yeah. job. But you got to get out, and you got to talk to people, and you got to listen to people, and you got to hear what they're telling you the problems are. And once you do that, it opens up things to you. They'll tell you right there, right there's a drug dealer's house, right there, because now they say, you know, they are, they got out and actually listened to me and came and talked to me and came into my house, and it, that's what policing is about. It's been that way with me ever since I came on, and uh, I hope it inst it's instilled in some, and I hope it continues in the rest. But you, you've carried the stepfather. You've carried the stepfather by relating and identifying with the children. And the children have uh, look up to, thanks, I think, to your effort and your, your department's efforts, uh, someone to, to admire and respect and not to be feared. This, this to me, is a significant accomplishment. Oh, thank you. Uh, you. You're so very kind, but you're, you're absolutely correct. There are kids uh, in these schools, Burke Street, all of them, they're my favorite, South Mill School, all of them, to get out, to get in, talk to these kids, bring them a canine demonstration. And, and you know, I've said this before, if you got, <clears throat> you got anything to say, get it out first before don't follow the dog act. Don't ever follow the dog act. Nobody wants to hear what you got to say once the dog's on stage. But let them see that it lights up them, it lights up yeah. their faces, they enjoy them, and put them first. And two of the things there uh, that I'm also proud of, uh, TMI, the Martinsburg Initiative, now I believe it's the Martinsburg Initiative, Inc., and they stand alone on, on their own, but we're governing it and we're a partnership with it along with our church-based groups, our faith-based groups as well, uh, are a part of that, and Margaret does a great job that reaches out to these kids and they have the data to show it, and they have the federal funding to show that it is successful and then handle with care uh, is always been dear to my heart when I saw it and I brought a lot of that here uh, we brought a lot of that here I don't like saying uh, so we brought a lot of that with us with handle with care and making referrals when police are at a very traumatic scene and there are children present and getting our officers uh, trauma training and, and to bring some sort of calm back to K, back from chaos. And then to make that referral to the school that child goes to the very next day so they have real time information. Those are very dear to me, very important to me. And bringing those kids into the department, letting them see the police station, let them climb all over a police car. That's important. That's important to these kids. That's important to our town. And that is who we are. And uh, I, I know that will continue. And one of the things, yeah, I will take a little uh, credit for this, uh, uh, I am, but we also have an on-staff social worker, Noelle Canellis, uh, it does a great job, and she goes out on calls. We use her kind of like a victim's advocate. She handles a lot of referrals, a lot of cases, and uh, it's an on-call social worker that TMI pays for itself. It didn't cost our taxpayers any money at all, but I thought, well, man, this is a great idea. I love it. It's going to work. And I'll have the first one. I'll have the only the first one in the uh, Eastern Panhandle. But uh, I find out I have the only one in the state that's on staff. So uh, I'm proud of that, and she does a great job. George, in in some ways, this was the job you were born to fill, and you had a 39 year career. You said, and the last three, when you get to June, will be as chief. Uh, again, a role that you probably were born to grow into, right? So. You seem like you still have the passion for it. It chokes you up a little bit to think about leaving it. So why, other, other, other than it's time, why now? It's just it, it's seeing everybody and seeing that the time. And 
I mean, some of the jokes, I get them and all, but looking out at it and all, it, it was just time. It's time for somebody else younger to, to get their feet wet, uh, to make uh, their own headway, to make their own uh, mistakes, to make their own uh, future as well. So th- that's all good stuff, but uh, it, it, it's just time. I think, I, I think, do I love police work? Absolutely. Uh, do I love being a cop? Absolutely. Will I always feel that way? You betcha. I mean, that's what I do. I'm a detective at heart. I love that more more than just about anything. So, but it, it it's just time. I don't know how else to say it. We're talking, and my wife and all, uh, and my and my kid. Uh, it, it's just time. So. You got to plan ahead because I kind of knew I couldn't just say, hey, I'm leaving and buy Mark a great fun. Uh, I knew that couldn't happen. So you had to plan ahead a little bit to do it. And the three-year mark is a good time. You feel like you still have your fastball? Uh, it it might have dropped a mile or two, but I'll still give it a shot for the money. And I'll chase after people. You know, when I was a detective, one thing they said, I, somebody I was chasing once for bank robbery, uh, myself and the FBI, we were over in Maryland, and what I heard was, don't you ever sleep? <laughs> and it was two in the morning, so that that was good. That was yeah. that was kind of reassuring me. But uh, yeah, I still I think I do. But uh, it's probably dropped a couple miles an hour. But uh, I'm still here, and I got good health right now. I still have good health, and uh, some of the other I got to just say some of the other people. Casey Boer with the sheriff's department, good friend, long time standing friend, and Lenny Milholland, Frederick County Sheriff's Department, my closest, one of my closest. Uh, friends whatsoever for like 40 years they're still in the game and uh, i let them know too uh, personally so all the best to them but the best thing and the most is my officers my men and women that are doing this job day in day out 24 7 they're tremendous they are simply tremendous and they will continue to serve martinsburg and this community and do an outstanding job the entire rest of the way all my supervisors all my lieutenants, Lieutenant Allball, Polinet, Garcia, all my sergeants, all my corporals, and all my patrolmen, uh, and their families. I wish them all, all that I could possibly give you uh, in the future. And if you ever need anything or something else, I'm not going any place. Give me a call. George, from the community, I want to say thanks. Thanks for being George. Thanks for being the chief. We've, we've all respect and enjoyed what you've done. Oh, coming from you, Bill, that means so much, eh? and you, Rob, as well, but that means so much to me because I know how much you've yeah. accomplished, and I pale a little of that, oh, I'm sure. Absolutely but, not. No, but, no, But no, you're no, tremendous, no. And, and I thank you, and I thank you for the friendship that uh, you all have extended to me and allowed me yeah. with WRNR. George, I hope you'll stop back again in June before the last day. Well, I will indeed, but uh, you also told me that. So, well, you have a voice for radio. Maybe there's an application <laughs> <Ooh>. somewhere. <laughs> I see co-hosting duties. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've been replaced already. No by George way. <laughs> no way. I can never fill those shoes. But uh, you all have been so kind to me, and I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for letting me have this opportunity. And sorry for tearing up, but couldn't help that. Hey, that's okay. I, you lasted longer than I thought I you know. were. I was trying. Right? When you've you dedicated well. your life to something and it's time to kind of stop doing it and move on, I mean, it, it's, it becomes who you are. Absolutely. And, oh, one last thing. And all my civilian staff, all, all the secretaries, Erica, Tanya, Jennifer, all my dispatchers, Tracy, Misty, I just saw her this morning, all of you, I thank you so much for making this team, making it work, moving it forward, and helping me every day. Thank you all so very much. Well, several nice comments on our Facebook page for you, George, if you get a chance to go back and read those. Uh, and, uh, and maybe in, in June we can get you on for a full hour and talk about some of the more monumental situations in Martinsburg over your career. We'll see about that, but thank you. <laughs>